In this video we're going to be looking at how we can mimic the Ocarina of Time camera so that whenever we press the Z quote unquote button, which I'm using L2 here, the camera will warp behind the player and allow us to reset the camera so that it faces behind the player. This is a very simple idea here and I'm going to be expanding on it in the next few videos, but for this we're just going to make exactly what I showed, which is very simple and shouldn't take very long at all. So I'll go ahead and get out a puppet here, and we'll use this as our character. Inside of this puppet logic, I'll get rid of the sliding behavior, level complete, follow behavior, and in here we can also get rid of the health manager as well as this damage timeline. We can also get rid of this tag. Inside of this puppet, I'm going to add a tag which will be for the player's position. I'll go ahead and put it there at the head and I'll label this player. Inside of the controller logic I'm going to create a new microchip and this will be for when we press the L2 button. I'm going to get a node and a signal manipulator and I'll plug the L2 button into here. Now L2 has a range from 0 to 100 so I'm going to use the signal manipulator to curb this a little bit so that it triggers at a much lower rate so we don't have to press the L2 button all the way down. So here we only have to press it 15% on the way down for it to count. So I'll leave it like that. And here I'll get a selector out and the output of this will go into the active port of the selector. So by default it'll be in port A and once we've pressed L2 at least 15% of the way down, it will switch to port B. I'm going to create a variable, and this will track our camera state. And in here, I'll get two variable modifiers out. This one and this one. So A will power this, which will set it to 0. And B will power this one, which will set camera state to 1. So now we'll move on to the actual camera. So I'll just get this block out and I'll place it roughly behind the player and I'll stamp an object or a microchip onto this object. And in here we'll get out a variable modifier which will get the value of camera state. This itself will also go into a selector into the active port so we can plug that in there. So when we press L2 not only will it switch the state in there, but it'll switch the state in here to B. So here we'll go ahead and get out a microchip inside of which I'm going to place a camera. And I'll also get out a couple of followers. So we'll get this follower and this one. One will be for following and one will be for fleeing. So I'll set the damping on both of this, both of these to 100. And I'll turn up the strength a little bit. We can turn the speed up as well. And so one of these will be for following. And so for that one, we want to follow it as long as it's a certain distance away. So I'll actually set this to 3.1. So this thing will follow as long as it's 3.1 or meters or further away from the player. But by default, it won't follow it. Also go ahead and turn the Y strength on this down, as well as the other follower. Now this one is going to be for fleeing, and we want that to happen when it's between 0 and 3 meters. So when it's between 0 and 3 meters, this thing will move away, and once we're past that, then it will follow. So both of these will follow the player tag. I'll also set this camera to a cut transition so that it's instant. And just so we can take a look and see how this works so far, I'll turn off visibility. And so now we can see that this block will follow the player, but if we ever get too close, it kind of backs away as well. Now, it doesn't look at the player, so we need to fix that as well. And so this one, inside of the A, which is the normal camera, I'll get a look at rotator, and we'll have this look at the player. And we'll make sure to click Stay Upright. I'll set both the overall damping and the strength to 100, and I'll turn this value up a little bit so that it's a little bit faster. And 
here I'll also drag this so that it's facing forward. Now that we have that done, I'll go ahead and copy this chip and B will power this one. Now inside of B, I'll just go ahead and display the black bars for now. And we pretty much should have it working. So let's see, when we're running around, things work as they should. It follows the player and backs up when we get too close. Then if we ever press L2, we can see the camera switches to this other camera type. So now in order to get it to warp behind the player, we're going to add one more tag inside of here, which we'll call behind player. And this tag will just go exactly where it says it should, behind the player. So there it is, behind the player. Let's notice the orientation here. X is to the left of the player, and Z is forward into the player. And so now in here, we'll get a teleporter out. And we want this orientation to match. So like we said, we wanted Y to be up and Z to be toward the player. And we also want X to be to the player's left. So we need to rotate this so that that matches. We'll go ahead and make sure that's aligned inside that block there. And now we're going to match behind player's target position and the target orientation when this is on. So now, when I press L2, the block moves behind the player to that position. Now obviously it has a little bit of zoom in, so or zoom out, and that must mean that this tag maybe isn't far enough away. So let's go ahead and start time. Now pause. Now we can see where we want this generally to be. So here we can see the camera as it follows the player around. It follows them around and if we get too close then it kind of backs away. Now if we ever press L2, the camera warps directly behind the player and gives us that little indication that this is the new viewing angle. And of course if we hold it then it follows the player around like so. This video is just showing how we could get this kind of camera warp behind the player so that we can readjust our view when needed. Since I'm kind of traveling down this Ocarina of Time uh, logic here, in the next video I'll go ahead and go over how we can target enemies in the same way that it's done in that game and other similar games, and that will build on top of this current camera setup that we've made. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. I see you out there. I know you're doing it. I'm not mad at you. Just disappointed. <laughs> Anyways, if you're new around here and you want to see more tutorials like this, click subscribe because I got a lot more coming out. I hope everyone's staying safe and doing well. I'll see you in the next video.